Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know David just sat down. I just logged on. Welcome to episode number four of Material Issues. We're actually uh, having a very interesting show. Dave's broadcasting from a different room than he normally does, and I'm broadcasting from a different state than I normally do. Live from Epcot here in Orlando, I'm Mark Hirschberger of Pop Detective Records. Joining me as always, episode number 24, my very good friend, Mr. David Bash of the International Pop Overthrow Festival. David, how the heck are you tonight? <laughs> well, honestly, I'm not feeling so great. I'm um, hoping it's nothing serious. Um, so we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Let's but, see what happens. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I've got my Ren and Stir Stimpy shirt on. Ren and, Ren and Stimpy? Total animation today. Look at that. That's only, their... Which is only fitting, I suppose. That's the retro 1971 version of Walt Disney World. It is the 50th right. anniversary here at Walt Disney Magic Kingdom. So I'm here for the 50th anniversary. Um, my daughter, Leah, who works for Disney, is right there to say hi with her ears on. Hi. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's my daughter, Leah. She works for Disney, and um, I'm broadcasting live from Epcot. We are actually in Morocco, the Morocco section of Epcot. Uh, Leah will be exiting here. We'll get uh, some fine Moroccan uh, food and some frozen mint tea and some wonderful things. But I'm glad to talk about because all I've been hearing for the last three days is the same Disney tune playing over and over everywhere we go, which is great. But after a while, you need you need a little bit of something. And we did go to Disney Springs, and they've got a bowling alley there called Splitsville, which is pretty cool. So, but what else is new in your world, I, I, my friend? I have to. I, have to I, I have inquiring minds want to know. I mean. Uh, Leah is a beautiful young woman, so I have to ask: Was her dad the milkman or something? Yes, <laughs> his his full name was the milk. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, what other explanation could there be, right? Oh, you're frozen, Mark. I don't know if uh, everyone else is seeing that, but come back, come back. I just see a big smiling face. Well, I don't know if everyone else, if, if you're seeing Mark is being frozen, can you please leave a comment to that effect? Um, and if that's the case, I'll just continue to talk about stuff that I was going to talk about anyway. So um, come on, anyone out there uh, who'd like to let us know what's, what they're seeing? Anyone? Bueller? 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 Now it looks like just me for the moment. So let me talk about some, some new releases that I've been listening to. And I should tell you, if I've already reviewed your CD or LP, I won't be talking about it here because I want to uh, give other people a chance. Um, what we have here is the new CD by a group called Chameleon, uh, I mean, it's it's called Famous Groupies is the name of the band. Chameleon Sessions is the name of the CD. And the sharp-eyed among you will notice, oh, here comes Mark back. There you are. I'll, be, I'll probably be dancing in and out as we go. So keep talking, David. I'm, I'm listening via Leah's phone. Okay. Well, you're looking good right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but anyway... This is, this is a band called Famous Groupies. This is their third CD. It's called Chameleon Sessions. Mark has heard it. Yep, uh, you the cover, um, you'll notice that it is a, a, a bit of a mock-up of the band on the run cover. Yep. So that might lead one to believe that this is a McCartney tribute or it's a completely McCartney-esque album. And no doubt, I mean, um, the main man of this group, Kirkeldy McKenzie, is a huge McCartney fan. And some of the earlier albums, uh, Dad is Frozen. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Um, anyway, 
His earlier album sounded very much McCartney, Emmett Rose-ish. But this one is a little bit more uh, all over the map. I do have to say that it's mostly, you know, aping different band styles. And so if you're into that sort of thing, which I am, if it's done well, and this is definitely done well, then you will love this CD. A lot of some ELO, some Queen, some, thank you, Andy, uh, some, and, and some Sir Paul, and just all kinds of different influences. And, you know, again, kind of an ape uh, job rather than, rather than something original, but that's okay because, like I said, it's done really well. So I would highly recommend this one, definitely. Let's see what else we got here. Um, it just as a side note, the entire plane ride down here, I was listening to Nelson Bragg's new album. Oh, yep. Well, we played all it know through, how good that is. So. Played played it through twice. So big, big, uh, big, big pitch for Nelson's. Uh, yes. Gratitude. Absolutely. Carry on. Here's a band out of um, out of Australia called the On and On. And um, the title is apropos, Back for More, because, uh, it's, it's, well, it's a new album. Um, really cool power pop. Uh, some of it leans to, uh, into the rock territory, but some of it's a little gentler. But it's all very catchy, all sung well. Glenn Morris has a really cool voice. Um, yeah, I mean, you're looking for a solid power pop album. You could do worse than this one. I, again, uh, definitely one I've been listening to quite a bit. Uh, a band that I like. A shout out to Clyde Bramley, uh, who's my Facebook friend, who's in the band, if he happens to be listening. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is tag everybody uh, for whose album I've spoken about. So, right, uh, yeah. so they'll find out. But yeah, check this one out, without a doubt. Um, now, here's a gentleman, another Facebook friend, who's an, a really excellent singer-songwriter. His name's Kevin, Kevin Robertson. He's the main man of the Scottish band Vapor Trails, uh, but he decided to put one out on his own. And I honestly think this is even better than Vapor Trails. Wow. I really cool. like. Uh, Vapor Trails is very, very much um, um, indebted to Teenage Fan Club for their sound. And this, you know, this has a bit of a fan club -y vibe, but it's a little bit softer, but with better chord changes, I think. And... Um, you know, more, um, even more jangle. I really love this album. I think it's gorgeous. And, uh, you know, I hope... So what, label, what label put that out? Um, Future Man and also <laughs> Sub Jangle. So it's a, it, it's a co-op. Yeah, uh, cool. And a really good record. It's called Sundown's End. I should know that by heart, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's kind of like I get so much stuff I don't remember uh, uh, album titles or song names until I write a review, and I haven't reviewed right. this one yet. So, but I would again a big recommendation. I, I it goes without saying if I'm going to talk about something here, it means I recommend you buy it or at least check it out. Um, here's one I just got. Uh, it's a man called the Parlophonics, and uh our good friend the ubiquitous fernando perdomo is in this oh. band I mean, what band isn't he in right right uh, yeah <laughs> like he's got i always call him the zealot of pop as you know. <laughs> he just seems to be you know anywhere you look you find this picture um oh. it's a the lead singer is a, a german gentleman by the name of robert horvath and um this just here's the interesting thing about this album it starts out kind of cheekily borrowing lyrics from Beatles songs in their original songs. I mean, the first song is called A Day in the Life, but it's not the Beatles tune. It's an original. Uh, but as, as it goes on, everything gets a little bit more serious and a little bit more, I don't know, from truly from the heart. Uh, a lot of Beatle, Badfinger influences in here. And I, of course, I love the name, the Parlophonics, because obviously it's evocative of the label Parlophone. And uh, it should be, because there's definitely that sort of British vibe on here, and it's really good. Check it out. Well, spe yeah, speaking of British vibe, just in case, I know we've uh, we we've advertised uh, uh, Todd Taylor being on tonight, but we've followed that up with the fact that uh, he couldn't make it. So just in case anybody was wondering if Todd's going to be on tonight, 
Tot had uh, something come up that uh, he had to take care of and couldn't be live with us from uh, England this evening. Um, but we will have part two of Tot Taylor at some point uh, in the near future because we, again, just like some of our other guests, we did not even scratch the surface of uh, what he's been involved with uh, past, present, and future. So, um, yes, yeah, so stay tuned for, for Tot coming up uh, down the road. Yeah, just want now, to mention. Like, like we discussed last week, I think it's best that when we have, uh, from now on, we start with whatever the guest is doing in the present so that we can make sure we talk about that. So that we right. don't have to do part two for everyone. You know, I mean, not that they're not, not that they're not worthy of a part two, but, you know, we want to have a more of a variety of guests. Right, we, right. So anyway, now here's one. This isn't brand new, but it's been around a few months. But it, it really is worth talking about in case you haven't heard it. It's, um, it's the band Sorrows, the, uh, the band out of New York um, who were around in the early 80s. And this is Love Too Late, the real album. What does that mean? Well, the album came out originally on CBS Records in the early 80s, but it was not to the satisfaction of the band. Uh, the label took, took the album, manipulated it, uh, without telling the band about it, and suddenly it came out, and when they heard it, they were, you know, they were absolutely flummoxed at what had happened, and they were not happy with the results at all. Well, fortunately, they were able to get the tapes back, and they were able to re-record the album uh, with all kinds of new stuff on here, the way they wanted it to come out. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, this is one great record. Wow. It's definitely, uh, I'm counting it as a new release because it was newly recorded and it's got to be among my favorites of the year. I mean, you want to talk about catchy power pop. Well, I mean, you're talking about songs that were written in the early 80s when people used to write power pop that was much more concise than it is now uh, and was very hook oriented. I mean, everyone was trying to get stuff on the radio back then. So hooks were even more important than they are now. Right, and right. Like I said, this is re-recorded with the original band members, but it um, it's it's just amazing. Um, definitely one of the best of the year. It's on Big Stir Records. Nice. Yeah, obviously, we know that label very well. We love them. They Shout have, out to Big Stir, eh? Yeah, I mean they have they have so you know so many re releases in their oeuvre, and you know it, a bunch of good ones coming up. So yeah, definitely check out check this album out. It's on vinyl too. I think there's it's black and red, so um, <laughs> the, you, you got a little bit of a choice there. Um, could you uh, could you tell me how to spell oeuvre? O e o e wait wait o e v r u e something like that. That's a great word. I just haven't heard haven't heard someone use it in a sentence in oh thirty years. <laughs> yeah, o e v v r e. I believe that's how you spell it. Oeuvre. Yeah. That's 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 what I said when I got up from sitting on uh, the Toy Story ride today. I said, Oeuvre. Yeah, don't we all at our age? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Here, Lord. Here's one that's not out yet, but will be in a couple of weeks, so I figured I'd give it some advance notice. Um, that's no, there's six letters in that, Andy. I'm convinced. I'm sure. Andy's Andy's from overseas. He might not know. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> now he's never going to listen to us again. Nah, he loves. I love Andy. This is one of my favorite bands of all time, uh, um, and I'm sure you love them too. From your home state of New Jersey, the Gripweeds. Uh, it's their upcoming album called Dig. Why is it called Dig? Because they dug deep into the songs that influenced them when they when they uh, became a band in the early 90s. So this is a covers album. Um, and this is the two-disc version. It's going to come actually in three versions. A single disc, the two-disc I'm holding here, and a three-disc version. Now let me explain. The, the, the single and two-disc versions are on Gem Records, and we will be doing a Gem Records night at IPO New York. And the Gripweeds will be part of it, doing their their uh, record release show for us, which is we're honored. The three disc one, which I don't have yet, and I don't even think they have yet, you'll only be able to get through the Gripweeds website. So that one will not be on Gem, as I understand it. Anyway, whichever version you 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 get, 
you won't be disappointed. I mean, these are, you know, these are pretty much all 60s covers, a lot of garage pop, you know, a lot of rock and roll, Brit, British stuff. You know, it's all stuff that's in their wheelhouse, and they, they do it all really well. Um, particularly, oh, probably my favorite thing on here is their version of the Bird's Lady Friend. I mean, it's so... I, I mean, it's like the skill that this band has manifests so much in that yep. version, but in so many other, uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you what they cover here because I want it to be a surprise, but it's all very cool stuff, including a couple of things that I didn't actually know, which is, I didn't think they could do that, but <laughs> you know, these guys know quite a bit and they, they really went back and they went to their back pages, so to speak, and pulled out a lot of, a lot of great stuff. So definitely check it out. It'll be out, I believe, on the 11th of November. No, wait. Yeah, the 11th of November, and they'll be playing IPO um, on the 13th uh, at Arlene's Grocery as part of Gem Records Night. So definitely check it out. I know they, out. Have, they have one or two videos out already. Uh, yeah, a couple one, of videos, yeah. Yeah. Well, and this will be on final as well, in case you uh, wanted that. <laughs> now, speaking of... Uh, older tunes, but not quite as old as those that the Grip Weeds covered. Here's a band that uh, had their heyday in the in the uh, early 70s, but sporadically would put out records since then. And um, their last album was eight years ago. And they're kind of long in the tooth now, but that doesn't mean they still can't rock. Yes, it's Caravan. Ah. The, the, the uh, UK uh, prog pop band. Back again with it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. They can still rock and Ty Hastings can still sing. And mo a lot of these songs are, are shorter than what people know them for. I mean, you know, back in the day, they were doing a lot of eight to 10 minute songs uh, featuring both, you know, featuring their beautiful harmonies and, and lead vocals, but also quite a bit of instrumentation as it was Prague. This one doesn't have too many tunes like that. It's mostly shorter songs that are, you know, more more conventional, but very, very well done. I mean, you know, like Fine Wine, these guys are just still going strong. Uh, that's a well, mix for, but that's okay. You know what I mean. Um, now, yeah, Dave, David and I have not talked about the things he's going to talk about on this show. So some of these are even surprises to me. And this one, this was a surprise. I didn't know you'd be picking up going I guess Caravan CD. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, it just came out, and you just froze. So hopefully we'll get you back. Oops. Well, we're back and forth. Okay. So, yeah, check that out. Um, here's a band, another band from the UK called Astral Drive. Um, you seeing this, Mark? Yep. All right, cool. Um, oh, so you're drinking. I need to, to have something, too. So here's my uh, Canada Dry uh, ginger ale with lemonade, zero sugar. I love that Canada Dry ginger ale. I'm in. I am in. If anybody has not seen the update, I am broadcasting live from from uh, Epcot. We are in Morocco. My daughter Leah and I, Morocco world. And what am I drinking, Leah? Pomegranate, Pomegranate citrus, citrus frozen something or other. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. It's uh, no alcohol. There's no alcohol in it. It's just. Fruit and pomegranate frozen in a slushy. Send me some to the screen, please. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Great. It's in sense around. <laughs> Smell of vision replaces Smell color. Of vision. Carl Stalling okay. says it'll never work. Oh, there you go. I just quoted Warner Brothers, the rival, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get back to this. Uh, Astral Drive is a UK band um, that's fronted by a gentleman named Phil Phil Thornley. And Phil might as well... Yeah, there you go, Andy. Yeah, I wish I did. Um, Phil is short... should Might as well be short for Philadelphia because this album has that Philadelphia sound that was... Um, that was made, made famous by Todd Rundgren and Hall and & Oates. I mean, it is a complete... A strong influence by both of those bands, and actually, Chasm Sultan from Utopia plays on um, 
uh, at least one of these tunes. Just wow. again, something that's very, very well done in that vein. Um, so, like I said, not 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 particularly original, but the influences are strong. And Phil Phil is a great singer songwriter, and again, I would recommend, highly recommend that you Astral it. Drive. It's on Lo Low Jinx Records, which uh, oh yeah. Hogwash had yep. been on. So, um, yeah, check that out. Astral Drive. Uh huh. Um, let's see what else we have. All right. So, here's another UK gent. Seems like uh, we've been stay residing in the UK for a bit. Um, Blake and his new album, Kaleidoscope. Blake is the nom de plume of Julian Pugsley. And one thing I really love about this album is it's it's extremely varied. I mean, it's all pop, but there's there's rock and roll, there's power pop, there's soft pop, there's folk pop. It's all done really well. All very catchy stuff. It'll sneak up on you. It uh, it's not going to hit you hard right away, but by the time you've heard the whole album, it's going to be like, wow, this was really good. Uh, and I remember a few of these songs, which is hard to do these days. And that's actually a conversation I wanted to have um, with you. You know, it's it seems like the albums that we you know we grew up with are so much more imprinted in our brain than the albums that we hear now. Even the ones that we hear now that are, you know, in the same league in terms of quality. And I mean, is it possible for us to listen to albums now the way that we used to? I I don't really think it is. No. I think um, you, know, uh, you know, when we were in our teen years, we were still developing quite a bit. Um, we we're going through all kinds of new experiences, uh, coming of age. Right. And those, those albums and, and singles, you know, whatever we heard on the radio, just kind of wove itself into the fabric of our lives way more than they do now. You combine that with the fact that back then our brain still had a lot more room to process things. Right, now, right. Like, it's so full, and the filing cabinets in our brain are so messed up that it doesn't get stored efficiently. So it's a lot harder to remember the tunes. Um, well, and so much throughout the seventies, growing up, which is you know the seventies was when I I really came into my own as far as um, listening to music, buying music, um, collecting music, talking about music, and so much of that time was formative years. And as you said, you connect a lot of those songs that you hear with brand new experiences, you know, all the way from, you know, first time I heard like go all the way and trying to figure out exactly what he was talking about going all the way. And, oh, I get it, you know, all the way up to like, what, 1979, I was at the, the local swimming pool and I heard Bram Tchaikovsky's Girl in My Dreams. It just so happened at that moment, I was kind of crushing on a girl that was looking good at the swimming pool and that was the girl of my dream. So like, boy, that, that song is, is forever indelible in my mind yeah. as a summer of 79 swimming pool, gorgeous girl. And I think there's so many of those moments existed early on. And even if we heard stuff from the past, like if we heard 60s tunes in the 70s, yeah. they still wove their way in that way. Right, uh, right. Because so okay. many new experiences were happening to you in your yeah. formative years, and you can connect so much of it. I mean, I, I can I can hear a song from, you know, my youth, and I can almost smell the interior of my mom and dad's car because I was in the back seat and Tommy Rose Dizzy came on. And if I hear Dizzy today... It takes me right back to that Absolutely. that faux vinyl backseat smell. There's not a whole lot of things today that I mean, I, it's I've been there, done that. And the songs yeah. can be great, and they can be awesome, and I might sing them now, but it doesn't it doesn't tie to an emotional thing. Not too often. Right. I have a few things when I listen to IPO CDs. Those particular those particular compilations will remind me of different things that happened at IPO or, or time surrounding. Um, I think because it's so topical that, uh, that, you know, almost, you know, by osmosis that, that it, it becomes that way. Um, there have been a few albums over the years that have done that, but not that many. Right. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it's like back then each day brought something new. It certainly does. It it's certainly interesting. Um, 
Except maybe spending, a new game somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Well, spending time with my daughter for the last three days, we've been driving back and forth to different uh, Disney parks and things. And in her car as she's driving, she's got a uh, soundtrack in her phone of, of uh, music. And it's all, a lot of it is power pop tunes. We were, she had, she had a Splitsville too. What, what Splitsville track? She was playing a, spl a track from Splitsville. Did I'm you like, Leah. At Splitsville? Not at Splitsville, but that would have been even better. But she's got all these tracks, but mostly they're all soundtrack um, from movies. And she ties all this music into her favorite movie. But I couldn't believe some of the, I mean, she had letters to Cleo, I want you to want you. She had tears for fear for movie. And I was like, but my daughter's listening to some really cool stuff. And, and I was, but she ties it into certain things of her life, which happens to be movie soundtracks you know yeah i mean how however it happens yeah however it happens yeah it's different for different people for sure and obviously the way that today's kids listen to music is very different from the way we did um, right you know, they weren't listening on the radio they didn't have the commercials in between um you know it, it it's a, it's a very different experience but they're they're going through the same things we did and those songs are weaving their way into their lives, you know, in, in now in kid, would groups. you what would you agree with your thoughts? Because back back in this late sixties, mid sixties, late sixties, seventies, music wasn't as much of a visual medium as it is today. Not today, today it's it's almost and I hate to say it, but it's almost what you look like first and foremost, and then the music Comes secondary for a lot of artists, you know. It killed the radio star. That was very exactly. present. It really right. did, uh, and that's unfortunate because you know so many, so many of the artists that probably would have gotten deals in the seventies, um, because nobody really cared back then. What, uh, or I shouldn't say nobody cared, but the prevailing thought was the music was more important than than how the band looked. It's not necessarily. It hasn't been that way since. Uh, or necessarily that way since um, videos were tied to the song. So, right. yeah, that's that's an unfortunate byproduct. I mean, obviously, they're, you know, it's great to see those videos. Some of them were very well executed, uh, well developed. But, yeah, that's You know, I, I was watching some videos and, you know, the grassroots had a lot of had a lot of big hits, obviously. And uh, a few days ago, I was watching on YouTube a number of videos from the grassroots from Ed Sullivan or whatever. So those guys, not not because the song, the music wasn't great, but they wouldn't they probably wouldn't do as well today because they weren't they weren't a young, good looking band, even in their heyday. Well, you know? I don't know. I think some people might disagree. Rob Grill, I thought, was a very good looking guy. But well, not, but before his mustache, the mustache yeah. is a bad idea. It made him look like a 70s porn star before the 70s. <laughs> okay. That I can go along with. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously they were of their time, but what I'm saying is today, it, when like five seconds of summer came out, those guys looked like they were all 16 years old and really like they could all be models, you know? Right. But you look at even the, even the you know, their, their very formative days, the hair and just it, it none of them were really chiseled model-esque looking kind of guys but, but um like that no i wouldn't yeah right they weren't quite in that league but they were reasonably good looking man i mean <laughs> i would do any of them i really <laughs> i'd only do maybe three three of them is about my limit <laughs> but great songs though great songs yeah no no doubt um so Actually, uh, oh, one more. I, ha I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this one. What, um, Steve Rosenbaum, have a cool summer. Uh, cool. Good, good buddy of mine, but more importantly, um, a great singer-songwriter. And you may be asking, well, David, what are you holding here? It certainly looks, well, it's too big to be a CD and too small to be an LP. So what, what the hell that? is it? What is it? It is a reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, it's it's a it's a reel to reel tape. Um, this album has only come out in two formats: reel to reel and eight track. It was always, what? yeah, I know, really. It was always that Steve, is insane. 
It is very insane, like Crazy Eddie. Um, oh, you froze. There you go. You're back. You had this really big <laughs> face on. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it was always Steve's dream to put out an A track and a reel, and uh, he's re he's realized R E A L, not R E E L. Thank you. Um, and um, he's realized his dream. Now you may say, well, I don't have a reel to reel deck or an eight track player. How am I, how am I supposed to play this mofo? Well, <laughs> I was just saying that if you buy one, you get a digital download. So you'll be able to play it to your heart's content. And um, but the question is, should you be buying it? And my answer is, well, yeah, if you, if you like early shoes, like black vinyl shoes, for example, these songs are recorded with, with very similar equipment. Between 1979 and 1989, when Steve was but a wee lad, uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's really good, kind of you know that that sort of homemade that homemade sound, but very catchy stuff. So again, yeah, any fan of black vinyl shoes should check this out. The songs are in very very similar vein, recorded with a similar sound. Uh, yeah, definitely. Extremely highly recommended um, to uh, people of that of that ilk, that bent. So, yeah, there we go. Be the, uh, be the first kid on your block to actually say, I just got a brand new album on Reel to Reel. And if you happen to have a Reel to Reel deck or an 8-track player, you will be, the, I mean, the music is <laughs> legitimately on there, so you can actually play it that way. I, rem I remember... Um purchasing Sgt. Pepper's and I had a reel to reel get home and you could play it backwards by turning the uh turning the tape backwards and seeing what what the Beatles were actually saying. I remember oh, really? those days. You could do that with a re with a reel a reel, reel to reel, reel. yeah. Did yeah. not know that. Yep. I had a reel to reel deck but never tried that. So It still sounded like they were saying I'm <laughs> sure it did. <laughs> because that's what they were saying. That's what they were saying. <laughs> ah, that's and great. That's a good segue into uh, some reissues here. Uh, All right. Oh wow, look at that. Andy's first co copy was reel to reel. Nice. And it's a shame you don't have it anymore. Um, <laughs> um this is a collection of tunes produced by the great Mike Hurst. Um, it's called In My Time, Recordings, Productions, and Songs, 1962 to 1985. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mike Hurst uh, first made his name as a member of the Springfields, which right. had Dusty Springfield and her brother. They were you know, right. more of a folk rock group. Well, more of a folk pop group. It really didn't rock. Um, then he, you know, he put out a few records on his own and produced a whole bunch of records by some cool bands of, of the 60s. Like, for example, he's got on here Murray Head, who eventually uh, um, sang lead on, on Jesus, on Superstar, a.k.a. Jesus Christ Superstar. Jesus Christ Superstar, yeah. Um, the Spencer Davis Group, The Move, Harden York, Colin Blumstone, Nirvana, of course, the 60s Nirvana. Uh, Summer Wine, which features Tony Rivers, um, uh, and a lot of bands here that Scylla Black, and a lot of bands that, that you may not know, uh, Paul and Barry Ryan. But it's also really good. It's all really good pop stuff. Um, and it goes into the early. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, the Alan Bound uh, is on here as well. Um, and um, thank you, John Kirby. And. There's also uh, his two solo albums from the early 70s, which are you know, really nice singer-songwriter albums. So uh, the guy was talented in so many ways. Uh, so yeah, it, it's a nice snapshot of what pop, of, of the kind of pop that was happening from the 60s into the early 80s. And he, you know, he has a very uh, distinct production style. Um, so yeah, it, 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 his production style is not all that different from Phil Spector's, but maybe a little bit more upbeat. Um, it's good stuff. I, I would recommend this if you're, if you're a 60s fan, especially. A lot of tunes you won't have already had. Cool. Uh, yeah. uh, one of my favorite songs of all time is My Baby Loves Lovin' by the White Plains. And um, so, of course, wow. how could I refuse this new compilation, White Plains, The Collection, which features their two albums, um, one of which only came out in the UK, um, which is When You Are a King, 
and uh, a bunch of rarities as well and bonus tracks. Um, everyone knows, well, not everyone, of course, but most, most people who are collectors know that uh, My Baby Loves Lovin' was sung by Tony Burroughs, right. who also sung uh, Love Grows Where, I Mo Where My Rosemary Goes and Gimme That Ding and Beach Baby. Um, but White Plains had a bunch of different lead vocalists. So you're not going to only hear Tony on here. You're going to hear a few other people. And um, it's and it's not all that it's not all that kind of sprightly pop that my baby loves loving is. Some of it is darker and, and slower and more rock. Um, so there's all kinds of different stuff. Oh, there's a really cool cover of Julie Do You Love Me, the Bobby Sherman. Hit. Bobby Sherman. Yeah. If my um, brother's watching, that was the song that I used to tease him about because the, the, the first girl that really liked him was Julie. And I'd walk into the room all the time going, Julie, 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 do. And then I'd have things thrown at me and I'd run out the room. So cheers mm -hmm. to my brother. I I once made it. I had a I had a thing for a, a woman uh, who was, was a student of mine when I was a grad when, when I was a grad student teaching uh, experimental psychology. And I made a tape for her of all songs that had Julie in the title. And um, <laughs> nevertheless, never, I mean, uh, it goes without saying, I should say, that she uh, she got a restraining order on me. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> but nothing did come of, of, of it. I, tr I tried to make something happen, but I couldn't. She did like the tape, though. Anyway, <laughs> this, this, this is on uh, the Cherry Red subsidiary, uh, Seven T's. Wow. Yeah. Definitely check this out. Well worth it if you're a 70s pop fan. I cool. Cool reissue, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, speaking of cover tunes, and I think I did post about this one on Facebook a while ago when I got the LP. Um, this is a band called Sun Dragon uh, from the late 60s. And it, uh, the album's called Green Tambourine. And yes, they do a cover of that. And that a couple of other, um, couple of other uh, Lemon Pipers tunes as well as uh, Love Minus Zero and um, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, which they call I Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star. But everything yeah, else is an original. And it's all really good. I mean, you know, if you like hook-filled 60s pop and who doesn't, uh, you should check this album out. It's, uh, it was a record store day release on LP, uh, but it came out independently on CD. And um, it, uh, it's on Vinyl Tap Records as a CD. And the originals of this album are worth a fortune. I, I don't have one. I wish I did. But the reissue is just fine. So either on CD or LP, I would check this out. I mean, it's a shame that, that, uh, that there's five covers on here, but, that, but there still are seven originals. I shouldn't say it's a shame because, you know, they do Probably. well. Oops. But it would have been nice if the whole album was originals, but still very recommended. I, here's some soul for you. Uh, it's a group called The Hesitations, um, doing an album called Soul Superman. And uh, their uh, main man, Freddie Butler, uh, had a solo album a little bit later with a dab of soul. And it's all really cool, kind of Motown-esque uh, stuff without being on Motown. Um, so if you're a big fan of Motown, you should check this one out. It's on Kent Records, which is the best soul label ever. Um, I'm trying to procure a Kent uh, a Kent Soul T-shirt uh, <laughs> we'll soon. Um, anyway, and it, will, it can be it can be worn. She's broadcast. We we're not we have no shame. No, I'll wear it if I, as soon as I <laughs> get it. Um, but oops, you're, there you go. You're back. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just one of those albums that was overlooked at the time. Uh, but you know, Kent has, has resurrected it. Well, both of them, the Hesitations and the Freddie Butler, uh, both on one disc. Check it out if you're a Soul fan. I, yeah, very highly recommended, no doubt. What's uh, the, what? What is amazing though is all the things you're seeing David hold up. He probably just got them in the last two days, and he still hasn't listened to the entire 27 disc Let It Be box set yet, <laughs> or the George well, Harrison. Uh, field locker full of uh, vinyl and see. <laughs> you're, you're right. Have, well, what I really haven't, I got the Caravan 36 CD box set. And, um, <laughs> I haven't listened to all of that yet, but I have listened to, 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 to some. 
Um, you know what? If, if you stick that in your car and start to drive, you might be able to get to visit me on the East Coast by the time <laughs> you get through about 28 CDs. That's right. <laughs> um, here's another one that's very cool. Have I tried Ace Records? Web? I think I did, Andy, actually. Um, I, I may have actually even ordered it. I ordered so much stuff that I've forgotten. Um, but uh, I definitely... Oh, you know what it was? I think the shipping on it was just way too high, so I haven't gotten it. I may have to wait till I come out to Liverpool next year and grab one in the UK. <laughs> um, the band Spirit, which, of course, um, The Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus is their most uh, revered album by most people. Of course, they had a bunch of albums in the late 60s, the L.A. band, um, the L.A. hippie band, as it were. Uh, as I went to this, as I went to the '70s, they changed their style a little bit. It's uh, it's still Randy California has one of the most beautiful pop voices, that, um, and um, this is uh, mostly their uh, their well, this is their Mercury era stuff. Sunrise and Salvation, the Mercury era anthology. Uh, my favorite Spirit album is Farther Along, and that's on this con uh, this box set. Um, cool. And uh, a bunch of other cool 70s stuff. Uh, some of it gets a bit more experimental, um, some, some song fragments. But hey, if Brian Wilson can do it, uh, Randy California and, and the boys can. Um, but Farther Along is probably their most accessible album, in my opinion, anyway. And it's on here. And, you know, there's, there's some other, I mean, Future Games, not the Fleetwood Mac album, <laughs> is, uh, is, is yeah. another one that's on here. A bunch of really cool live stuff. Um, a demo version of the album Future Games. Uh, if you're a Spirit fan and you thought their their career pretty much petered out after 12 Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus, think again, because if you buy this and listen to this stuff, you'll find out that they had a lot more to say after that. So definitely uh, an esoteric recording. And that's another subsidiary of Cherry Red. Uh, Cherry Red, I mean, honestly, they're yeah. kind of the best reissues right now hands down all uh, right now yeah. a lot of these uh, reissues david are they are they coming with uh some good uh, booklet information uh, yes every, everything i mean that besides the music which is you know paramount uh I, I, paramount i like i like to uh look at booklets that do have some history on on the band and recordings and things like that sometimes re reissues you see some great information you see some great rare photos uh but sometimes you don't Sometimes they don't put a whole lot in there, and uh, uh, that get, that can be a little disappointing. Cherry, Cherry Red never spares yeah. Spencer effort. Yeah, um, Cherry Red's usually fantastic. Look at that. Know, Look at that is, book. This is the spirit book. I, you know, it's hard for me to display it. Yeah, but, here, but, 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 but you can tell that it, it, it's photos, loaded. Lots of info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that good stuff. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, my the last one here um, that I want to talk about is a a really cool compilation called Think I'm Going Weird, Original Artifacts from the British Psychedelic Scene, 1966 to 1968. Wow. Um, five discs on Grapefruit Records. Um, uh -huh. Another subsidiary of Cherry Red. Um, I, I, you know, it's, um, it's sort of a notebook style. Um, yep. And, yeah, it, it, it's a nice mix of, of, you know, bands that you would expect and ones that you might not have heard of it's just a really nice cross section of uk psych pop from that oh, era. Cool. and you know if you if you know some of this stuff granted some of this stuff has shown up on other comps a lot of it has not and uh, anyway you know do you want to have to grab all those comps to hear this stuff no you just grab this one and you've got uh, over a hundred tracks of that era so um I, I believe this has just come out in the UK. I got mine from Dusty Groove, um, right. a, a Chicago uh, record store and mail order company that seems to get cherry red stuff earlier than everybody else. So I would go there for anything that you see coming out on cherry red or any of its subsidiaries, go to Dusty Groove and pick it up there. You'll get it early. Um, all right. So that's it. Um, there's obviously a lot more I could have spoken about, but as you said, you know, this is the stuff I got in the last two hours. So, <laughs> well, you know. you know, you got you got that relatively new house with all the custom built-in uh, shelving. You got to fill it up, man. Uh, That's right. Otherwise, it looks empty. You know, 
it's um it's very cool but but we love we don't get a lot of time to talk about new issues and reissues and things like this because we always have fantastic guests i mean this is episode number 24 and i think what 21 episodes we've talked with guests mm -hmm. so and we will be talking with more guests over the next few weeks so yeah, yeah. we've got uh, we've got some great stuff coming up over the next few weeks and that's going to take us into uh the holiday season and who knows uh who knows what what that's going to bring we uh we're going to have some fun with that i believe um We'll have to get some uh, some holiday music on here with somebody, possibly. We'll see. You know, here's and and this is a yes, but and here's some here's a, something I want to discuss that's not so much fun, and maybe I should leave this topic alone. But you know me, I just can't help it. I can't help bringing up some controversy. Actually, you heard the phone ring. That was Jeremy Morris, um, ah. one of the nicest people in the world. And I'm wondering if he's he wants to talk to me about what I was what I was going to bring up here because. Ken Stringfellow has produced a couple of his, uh, his two of his recent albums. Know where you're going, yeah. Things that uh, that Jeremy has done because Ken is quite a great producer. Um, probably everybody listening knows what's come what's come down in the in the past few days. Yep. The allegations of sexual assault uh, made by uh, by quite a few women, three of whom were prominently quoted in an article um, that was. That, that's been making the rounds. Um, John Auer and Frankie Siragusa, the other members of the Posies, uh, have said they don't want to work with him anymore. Um, it's really tragic. Uh, I mean, that much I think we can all agree, agree right. on. How we handle that situation, obviously that's going to be a, a matter of personal opinion. Um, some people have disowned the band completely. They won't listen to their, their music anymore. Um, and certainly anything Ken has put out on his own is probably anathema to a lot of people right now. Um, other people are, you know, there, there's a big moral dilemma going on in the heads of a lot of people. Right. Like, what do I do? I mean, I clearly don't, I don't want to associate with anybody who, who is a sex offender. And, um, I certainly understand that very heavily. Um, Ken, to his credit, Ken has um, been very forthcoming on Facebook and probably on other social media. He has categorically denied the charges. He says, it's not me. I, you know, I've had violence in my life. I would never do that. Um, and on the other, you know, at, at the same time, he's saying that he understands where the women are coming from. He understands how that people are outraged over this. Um, he wants, you know, he wants everybody, he just wants everyone to be well. He, he wants whatever feelings that have, that have been hurt and whatever hurt ha that has been caused. He wants it to, um, well, he wants people to handle it as well as they can. Uh, I guess what I want to bring up is, you know, the way I try to handle this kind of stuff is I try to separate the artist from the art. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to let it affect how much I love the Posies. Um, certainly one of my favorite bands. And Dear 23 is a, a top 10 album for me of all time. Uh, I know Ken a little bit. You know, I, I, we're, we're, I wouldn't exactly say we're close, but we've met a few times. We've spoken on Facebook. Um, his band Saltine played IPO back in the day. Um, it's just, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, you know. I don't know what the you know obviously John and Frank and Frankie the fact that they left the band so quickly they probably know some you know a lot more than than we do um, things do get misinterpreted sometimes probably right. not in this case it, it's just I mean I don't know it's just all really really tragic I feel I feel very I feel terribly for the women involved and I do feel badly for Ken I, I know that I probably shouldn't but. He's going well, through a lot of turmoil right now, too. And, and you're very correct in, in many ways to separate. Oh, come back, Mark. Come back. So there we go. We could, yeah, we could probably sit here. We're talking about separating the art from the artist. We could sit here and run down a laundry list of artists who have had many types of problems uh, throughout their career. Um, 
And if, if a lot of it actually came to light and, and there was even more, you'd have to get rid of uh, a number of artists in your yes. record collection if you feel that way. But there is a big difference between the art they create and what the artist does in their own personal life. So, you know, try to keep that in mind. I mean, there's still a bazillion Michael Jackson fans that will love him to the day they die. Um, you know, and that's that's really separating art from the artist. It's funny how that's where the, the, the line is drawn, too, because I've yeah. had people... Let, like I've had people get angry at me for, for post, I, I think I once posted a Gary Glitter song as a favorite of mine. And someone I know said, how dare you do that? He's a child molester. And yeah. I said to them, do you, do you, um, are you going to stop listening to Michael Jackson? It's like, well, no, I don't think I can do that. It's like, well, <laughs> I think it's pretty clear that he, he molested his share of children, whether or not he was convicted of it. So. Well, and, and you know, and, and whatever whatever the truth uh, is that comes out is the truth, uh, whatever it's going to be, and it's and I'm sure it's it's going to affect many things that he does down down the road in the future, and that's again another choice. But um, I don't know if if you're a fan of the art uh, and what has come before, um, and and you hear something, you know, you, you could play a track from a brand new album a year from now and not tell anybody who it is, and if it really is it really affected with what if it's it's art and the artist so you got to make your own choice in in in, in the in those uh those realms right. yeah absolutely yeah i'm not here to try and advise people what to do you know you you um it, it's your choice it, it, it's um it's your head you, you know you you have to do what works for you I'm but just we're just, just, yeah, we're just uh, yeah, we're just trying to bring you the best in material issues, entertainment, and that and that covers all types of things going on in the music world. Today just happens to be some newish, some new uh, releases, some reissues, and uh, some salty things going on in uh, in certain people's lives and whatnot that we like to talk about. But uh, that's why we're we hope you're happy when you tune into material issues because you just never know. You never know. You know. Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, so I make sure you do tell all your friends and uh, you join the group. Tell them to join the Facebook group or over at uh, YouTube and subscribe. Um, that that's what keeps uh, David and I rolling along because we enjoy each other's company and uh, and the guests that we have on here. So you know, um, as Andy said, feelings are running high. Uh, those have always been more than just Ken, and yeah, it's it's a good point. Well, that's Andy. a point, Andy. That's a point that a few people have made on Facebook. That you know, it's not just him. Um, some people have made the point that you know, at the time, especially the earlier stuff when he recorded that, that wasn't the person that he was. Um, you know, there are all there are all kinds of different arguments that can be made. Um, it's just a shame that we have to make them. Um, and yeah. I, I just I, again, I feel I feel really badly for everybody involved. Um, you know, I, I'm sure a, a lot of people, especially women, are hoping that Ken rots in hell, but uh, he's going through his own personal hell right now. Whether yeah. or not it's deserved, he's going through that, and right. um, he's, he's going to have to live with this, and it's not going to be easy. It really isn't. I mean, you know, he, he's there a bunch of a bunch of fence, a bunch of fences will have been uh, broken. Um, it, it's uh, it's going to be very difficult for him for the rest of his life. Uh, and, and of course, for the women, I mean, and and they're very brave to come forward for sure. That's, yes, indeed. Yes. Yes. Even now, in 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 the uh, in the wake of Me Too, it's not easy for women to come forward. It really is. <laughs> John. There's quite a few paternity cases swept under the carpet. For, yeah, I'm sure there are. I, I've heard I've heard stories of uh, when the Beatles appeared in in Atlantic City, how they had to uh, how they had to run relatively young ladies out the back of the uh, hotel rooms and, and whatnot. Um, you, you read some of the, the yeah, I don't know the truth or what, or whatnot, but some of them make you kind of go, yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> you, know? Look, you know, being, being, a, being a musician, being an athlete, uh, being on, you know, you're on the road a lot. You're going to have a lot of temptation. You're going to have a lot of people, men or women um, offering themselves to you in many different ways. It, and I'm, again, I'm not justifying anything here. I'm just explaining it. It's very difficult to uh, it, it, and take it from somebody like even me, who you know, who's hardly a you know, uh, who's hardly a hot musician or athlete. 
I run a music <laughs> festival. I'm on the road a lot. It gets lonely. I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and David, uh, I'm here, I'm here in uh, Orlando, Florida, and um, <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but there's there's quite a crowd now, all staring at me here. And there are women I can tell they're writing their phone numbers down as I speak, um, which will probably be coming my way in mom momentarily. I'm just you're, trying. You're, to, you're a single man. Hey, you I'm can trying, do what you I'm want. Trying to keep them quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, again, that's a separate issue from sexual assault. I mean, infidelity, yeah. and you know, of course, uh, people in in the inner circle knew about Ken's indiscretions, including his wife, and that's another issue. Uh, but but. Eh, it's like, yeah, I mean, if John Borax listening, he's probably saying, "David, keep your mouth shut already." You know, you said too much. <laughs> I've said enough. Grumpies, grumpies. I guess. Well, they do. Some of them do grope. Yeah. So, if anybody's, if anybody's nice ever seen board, video, bro. if anybody's ever seen video of David introducing a band at IPO and all of a sudden he goes, oh, it's because the video doesn't show from the chest down the, the IPO gropies. Actually, when I gave, there was one band where I, when I gave it up for them, the, the, the lead singer, she, uh, she groped my ass. That's the mind you know, I, I, when I was in my younger days and I, I played in a band, we, we played seven nights uh, in a row at a strip club. We, we, they had bands in between the, the strippers. And I'll never forget my drummer. We, we were, I forget what song we were playing. And all of a sudden, the drums completely dropped out. <laughs> we all turned around to look. And there was a, there was a naked stripper grabbing him from, from behind. And he nice. just really sticks up and said, forget it. I'm done drumming this track. I don't know if that's inappropriate or funny, but at the time, it was funny. Yeah, it should still be funny. It's still funny. <laughs> you know, everything's con everything's consensual there, so nothing nothing wrong with that. As long as it's consensual and no and no but and no nobody's <laughs> fidelity is being compromised. <laughs> hey, whatever it all whatever it goes. Um, all right, so we only have three minutes left. Um, who do you want? Who do you like in the World Series? Boy, who do I like in the World Series? Probably the Strohs. Yeah, I have to. I have to go with the Braves, not because I'm a Braves fan, but because the Astros are big cheaters and screw them. <laughs> and as a Yankees fan, I, you know, we were victims. That. We were victims of their cheating, not as badly <laughs> as the Dodgers, um, obviously. And that's why, you know, that's why I was really hoping for an Astros Dodgers series so that the Dodgers right. could avenge what happened. <laughs> And Fox was hoping. For, yeah, there you go. Um, Fox, Fox was hope. Fox was hoping for that too. My keyboard is a problem. A problem with me, John? What did I ever do to your keyboard? He was very gentle with it. He's always been very ge gentle with your keyboard. Yeah, I mean, you know. David, um, who do we got coming up uh, next week? We've got uh, Steve Stanley. Yes, we do. Um, speaking of uh, Cherry Red subsidiaries, Now Sounds is one of them. And uh, you're not, you know, Now Sounds reissues are tremendous always because Steve goes through painstaking efforts to make sure that you get everything on tape. Whatever's available on tape, he's going to get. Um, right. Liner notes are always incredibly thorough, great interviews, photos, everything. Um, so it was a perfect fit. And uh, he's got a Bo Brummel's collection coming out. <laughs> I think I know who this Facebook user is, actually. <laughs> yeah, now I definitely know who it is um, after I saw that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have Steve Stanley on November 3rd and then on November 10th. The irrepressible Mr. Robbie Rist. Robbie Wrist on November 10th. Well, you don't uh, have to worry yeah. about going into material issues, Jail, because there's nothing you could say here. That, that would People possibly... need to pre-order their popcorn uh, for that show. Uh, make sure you go to the bathroom and not leave for the hour. That should be an interesting one. Uh, with our yeah, it definitely. And then who do we have on the 17th? 17th is uh, th this. This was a good get. This is. Uh, uh, George Boyder of uh, that one album wonder, The Head Boys, uh, with their, uh, their their top 20 hit, The Shape of Things to Come. And they uh, released that album. It came out. It did gangbusters. And then they were gone. What happened to The Head Boys? And you'll find out right from the man himself, George Boyder, on the 17th. 
And speaking of that, um, I want to, uh, I, there are a couple of other reissues I wanted to talk about here, and this is a band I know you love. And one of the reasons I want to bring these up is because this is somebody, somebody from this band we definitely need on the show. It's Starry Eyed and Laughing. Um, they, I don't know if you know this, Mark, but Sony Japan put out reissues of their two albums. Did not uh, know. In, no. in 2018, <clears throat> and they are gorgeous. Wow. They amazing. Um, should be this way, actually. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about a birds influence band? I mean, you know, you, you won't find much better than this. Uh, guys from the UK. Um, I, 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 I There are other bands in this ilk I love, like um, Matthew Southern Comfort and um, Unicorn. But these guys may be the best at what they do. I mean, the harmonies, right. the, 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 the jangle, the whole thing. It's it's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And don't you know at least one person from this band? I think, yeah, I probably do. I'll, I'll have to start making some uh, making some connections here and see what we can what we can what we get, can do. Yeah, go on eBay, Mark, and get these. They sound better oh, than, yeah. than the reissues that have come out, and they're not all that expensive. Um, Good call. Yeah. Good call. Check them out. All right, we we did it. We made it through the hour without without straining ourselves one bit. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Another hour it went like this. And uh, yeah. it's it's been wonderful uh, coming live to you from Epcot here in Florida with, if I could just say a quick hi of my my daughter Leah, who I'm very proud of, who uh, who's working for Disney. So uh, I was down here for three days, just a quick in and out, so I could spend a little time with her. And um, it's it's been wonderful, and it's again been wonderful to spend an hour with you, my good friend David. Likewise, Mark, and I love I love how it's you started out the show. It was still light out, and now it's dusk. So now it's dusk. <laughs> it's really cool, but you still look great. And uh, yeah, you too, always, my friend. Always fun, and that yeah. So um, now for the next few weeks, uh, you the listeners will be spared the ignominy of listening to us only. Um, <laughs> but you know, we'll probably be back in, in, in another few doing one of these again when I have yes, more to talk about reissue wise and we have more to talk about topic wise but um yeah so everyone have a great rest of your day your week come back see us with steve stanley next week and um yeah take care mark have a safe trip home good night everybody peace love we'll talk to you soon you good night it. good night